let's talk about event log analysis. I'm going to do best of event log analysis here, my friends. Why? Because I can't possibly repeat all of, you know, what complete presentations have been done on this stuff, right? I can't do that here in an hour. Um, I even did one in Wild West Hack and Fest Reno. I was looking for the recording on that and I can't find it. Um, if anybody knows where it's at, um, you know, game on, please drop it in the Discord. Getting into the event log analysis, right? There are no shortage of tools available to process these EBTX logs. No shortage, right? The native Windows event viewer, as horrible as it is, and it is horrible, right? As horrible as it is, it is a tool, right, that, that can still view event logs, right? And so um, don't discount it if you don't have another tool. But, but I do want to note something that a lot of folks are not familiar with. All your data in the Windows event log is, is labeled. Now, I don't mean that that makes it easy to analyze, but it's at least labeled. I know that a particular field, because there's a label right next to it, um, that's the user ID, right? And this is the share that was accessed, uh, 5140, and uh, you name it, right? And so I, I'm able to see that because we have both the data, which is the EBTX logs, and the maps, which are in DLLs, right? And so when you analyze event logs on a different system, from where those logs were generated, you may actually have to go build your own maps. And this is one of the reasons that I'm gonna gravitate back to a Zimmerman tool because those maps are already built for the vast majority of stuff that I wanna analyze. There are tools that I like from a like data output, um, in some cases a little bit better, but I then have to go and figure out my mappings, right? In order to not have, you know, basically in order for me to know what that data is, right? Um, you know, or or have to go figure it out. Again, I'm an easy button kind of guy, right? So to the, because the hard work again is, is in the analysis, right? So anyway, all that said, right? Wait, wait, wait. Did you actually find, did Ryan find the, you actually found it? Gosh, dog, I was all over, I was all over YouTube, not Vimeo looking for that. That is awesome. Um, <laughs> so, okay, rock on, rock on. So fun fact, right? Um, I had a, uh, uh, parasite uh, thing was a fungal looking whatever uh, deal. And if you go back through the Wild West Hack Fest, uh, uh, gosh, Wild West Hack Fest archives, I think it's one of the privilege escalation videos. And you can see me as I turn um, my, and by the way, I'll just, you know, push down here so you can see like the top of my head does have hair. Like I've got this giant, maybe it's, I say giant, six inches of like baldness, right? Going on there. It was, you know, I've had people come back to me, you know, in recent last year or two here and be like, Jake, did you, did you have like hair transplants or whatever? It's like, no, I just finally saw the right doctor who knew what was going on and bam, was, you know, fixed. But anyway, alas, uh, I don't know whether that video has, has giant like missing hair there, but alas, uh, EX, EVTX, E command. So, uh, EVTX being the file format, E extraction, I think, um, and then command. This can extract event logs out into a CSV. They are already uh, XML formatted, zipped, and then XML formatted. But what I like about this is a few things, right? First, it can either exclude or include specific event IDs, right? So I can say, don't show me these things that I never use, right? Be careful about that. But, but for first pass, if I want to get rid of stuff, oh my gosh, this is fantastic, right? To go exclude stuff out. Or I may only want to look at a time series of, you know, specific event IDs anyway, and and build a time series there. Uh, one of my favorite features of most of Zimmerman's tools is that it can be used to automatically, automatically deduplicate entries from volume shadow copies. But this tool in particular does something magical, and this is something that I do, man. When I do network analysis and Wireshark, like one of my first stops is statistics, and then protocol hierarchy. Well, it turns out that EBTX E command does something just like this. They, they call it metrics, right? And this is an example of, you know, it's starting to process through the output for this. It's uber, uber long. Uh, let's see if I can go grab a, let's see. Yeah, there we go. Cool. So let me drag this over here. I guess, yeah, I'm not going to make it big here, but you get the idea. Hopefully this, this is at least visible. Will it? No, it's, it's not going to be okay. Never mind. I'm not going to change my font. But you get the idea here, right? Of these 17,000 records, it shows me then uh, basically the distribution, the count of these, uh, you know, these records. Now, if you look here, 17,000 records, right? 
14,000 of them, right, are this uh, 4907, right? Man, I tell you what, that's going to make for a really, really noisy event log analysis. Could you just filter those out? Sure, you could, right, um, you know, in, in the analysis, but that creates now compound filters immediately, right? And so I probably want to redo this. When I have something that dominates my event log like that, all things equal, I may go ahead and pull that out in my first pass, right? And so this is a tool I often end up running multiple times on a given event log, or I run it once and I do a lot of grep and, and create intermediate files. But anyway, um, regardless, um, I like this ability to get this count here and, and, and help me figure out, I kid you not, I used to do this in pivot tables and, um, in Excel, right? So, and uh, the fact that this now is here, uh, makes it just phenomenally easier for me. It's just part of the regular uh, regular workflow. Okay, um, so what kind of data can, oh, snap. Uh, let's go back here and look at what kind of data can we get from a parsed event log. Nope, not that one. How about that one? Hey, there we go. Okay, so this is our security event log, uh, security event log, and this is our CSV. And I filtered on event ID 4624. This is, that's a successful log on. And you can see here indeed that uh, there have been multiple fields that, that have been uh, that have been pulled out. But notice here where it says payload data one, data two, data three, right? Um, this is not because it doesn't know the mapping at all. Um, it comes down to there's different payload fields, right? Um, you know, within your event log. And again, if you want to know the specific, what does that field represent, you're ultimately going to need those, those maps to pull that back. And in fact, um, EVTX uh, uh, E command you know, actually shows you that here. Let's get to the pull. There you go. And it puts into this nice little JSON object. And uh, of course, there's no, no new lines, right? But um, so you can see here, and ultimately this thing, like where it says, for instance, um, you know, the subject user SID, right? Restricted admin mode, right, is is null, right? Well, again, the, that's coming from the maps, right? And so if you're doing, the reason I bring this up is if you're doing event log analysis for a uh, some third-party application that's writing its own event log or something, you, you aren't going to have those maps, right? And so it's just going to be these unknown, be like field one, field two, field three, like, what the heck? You got to go build your own maps, right? Um, and so that's, that's another topic for another time. We don't even deep dive into that in the course. But uh, anyway, okay. Well, just because you don't do it as often. Yes, is the, uh, yes. like all things, we have to prioritize. Well, what are the odds? Um, okay, so moving forward, let, let's take a look at our fifth and final artifact, registry analysis. Now, this can provide a multitude of useful evidence. There's practically nothing that isn't recorded in the registry. Malware, right? Evidence of file knowledge. Like, did the user know this file existed? Can I prove they opened the file, right? Uh, the user account, user contacts, right? Did they create a service, mount a drive, install software, or uninstall software for that matter, right? Did they view files in Explorer? Turns out that just viewing them in Explorer um, often writes them into this other user class.dat hive, right? Um, and then, of course, there's just so much evidence of execution and and you name it, right? Now, <clears throat> I do want to talk briefly about limiting your scope of registry analysis because when people start this, they're like, oh my gosh, I can't believe how much data there is. What am I supposed to be looking at? And the answer is, it depends, right? Remember when we started out, when I talked about the fact that you need to go back to your stakeholders and understand what it is that your stakeholders want in the first place. Well, my registry artifacts that I parse are going to be largely tied to that. Now, some folks, you know, that have been around a while probably heard of like Reg Ripper. And, you know, I talk to forensic analysts occasionally who have been in the game a long time. And they'll be like, oh, yeah, so I ran Reg Ripper and here's the output. I'm like, right, but what about this other application? And I, Reg Ripper didn't say anything. I'm like, well, no joke, right? I mean, Red Ripper or any other registry tool, right, is not examining every key and value pair. They have plugins that are written to look at very specific, right, value keys and values that are normally interesting and useful, right? Not the whole enchilada, as it were. And so if I know I have something, right, that's going to be useful, man, I, I definitely want to go parse that. 
A uh, great example of this, right? Um, I don't think there's a plugin for this at all. Uh, FileZilla, very, very common tool used uh, by threat actors for data exfiltration during a, uh, you know, during an incident. Um, and uh, FileZilla, as it turns out, uh, does write some interesting or has in the past written some interesting data, um, you know, into the registry, write some interesting data into a config file too, uh, for whatever that's worth. But, uh, you know, so I, I, I like the ability to go in and, and, and pull that data out. And there wasn't a plugin for it. Again, if there is today, then whatever, right? I've written my own and done, right? Um, but, you know, the bottom line here is it, it's the first challenge with registry analysis is just figuring out where to apply your very, very limited time. If, if you don't have any other leads, right, you can take a look at, you know, Zimmerman's plugins for RE command, registry export, um, and then RegRipper as well, right? And that's Harlan Carvey um, who writes, uh, writes RegRipper. Um, and so I will mention here, there are a lot fewer plugins for uh, RE command than there are for RegRipper. That's not necessarily a bad thing, right? Um, a lot of the RegRipper plugins are very legacy. Um, and I say legacy, meaning that, you know, some of them are looking for stuff that just doesn't matter anymore. Zeus configurations, for instance, right? Or, you know, what have you. And then there's some stuff that's unique in RegRipper that is, uh, that might be useful, but, but only in specific circumstances and you name it, right? Again, if, if you're trying to jump into this, I'd probably stick in the RE command, at least as, as my start. Speaking of which, here's an example of using RE command. And here in this particular case, what I'm doing is using uh, ultimately this, uh, this batch. And you see this tac tac bn parameter here, right? And so what I'm doing here is going and parsing ASAPs, auto start extensibility points, basically auto runs out of the software hive. Right? Um, and so I've given it a, uh, basically given it a reference to where is the software hive. And then said, hey, I want you to go create me a CSV, um, you know, around uh, CSV around all of this. Right? Um, and so th this works, as it turns out, phenomenally well. And uh, once, that's, uh, once that's done, I'm able to come in and let's go grab this. Yep, here's our software ASAPs. Um, and so let's say that I wanted to go look at our everybody's favorite, the run key, right? Um, and so we can see what's in our run key. Uh, we can see that there's uh, something here for uh, for run uh, run once. Notice over here the last write time, and I say something over here. There's a run once key. There are no sub keys or values. Um, but notice over here this last write time stamp. Now before for space when we're looking at file systems, I, I was only bringing over the creation timestamps. Right? And remember we talked about MacB, and then you have multiple copies of your MacB timestamps. Here. We have one timestamp. It's last modify. It's only at the key level. Any modification of a sub key or a value directly nested under the key updates the last mod, include any modification, including deletion of a sub key or value, <laughs> does indeed update that timestamp. So that timestamp is useful in some circumstances. I've seen people misunderstand that timestamp and have it throw off an investigation. Right, where they're like, oh, well, based on this, X couldn't have happened. And you're like, you're misunderstanding how to apply that timestamp, right? Again, this is the delta between understanding the artifacts and parsing the artifacts, right? Um, so, okay, um, all that said, that's that guy out of the way, okay? And so here's my screenshot in case we have like massive failures elsewhere or whatever. And, whew, so that I have 10 minutes for questions and answers. I want to close out here. Uh, well, actually, I want to thank the more than a thousand of you that showed up to talk forensics. So rock on. I did not expect a, uh, not expect a crew that uh, crew that large, but, but thank you. Um, and, and then I want to note that, that forensics is about analysis, not about tools. Your tools process the data. Your analysts make sense of the output, period. That's it, all right? There is no push button for indicator, right? There's just no like go and do all the forensics for you. It just doesn't work that way, right? You know, I, I mentioned, and I'm going to pivot back to the you know the Hunter Biden analysis, right? Um, you know, my best in breed tool for Mac forensics is Samuri. Um, it grabs timestamps that others don't. Period, right? And uh, uh, because of the way the Mac file system, so HFS Plus is a giant pain in my rear, um, but all that said, right, you know, again, it, it didn't provide a 
the vast majority of what you what was reported on the post, um, actually, I don't think anything reported on the post came out of the summary analysis. And it's not a knock on summary. It, it's a reality of sometimes the tools don't exist for what we need to do, right? And again, it's the analyst who has to come in and say, here's the requirement here. And ideally, your analyst can code it to you, but whatever, right? Um, you know, here's what we need ultimately to perform this analysis, right? Um, I, I have been really tool heavy today, but, but I've also tried to show some of the types of questions and talk about the types of questions you can answer with this. And, and I, I should mention, I mean, obviously, right, for anti-siphon, Seth, who's sponsoring this webcast today, um, that, uh, you know, we cover significantly um, analysis considerations along with hands-on, so you're doing it. You know, instead of listening to me talk about it, in, uh, in this uh, course, the Advanced Endpoint Investigations, uh, written by Alyssa Torres, and I guess whatever by, by me. I don't co-author it, but help with, I guess. So anyway, all that, I'm going to open it up for questions in like 10 minutes here. Well, Ian, oh my gosh, I should have brought my, ah, oh, I've got the blue color hat that looks suspiciously like that. Oh, it's, it's out of Listen, brother, out Are of you ready to go channel. into questions? I'm ready to go into questions. Let's do it. That hat, though, too cool. Ian had to leave. This is your friend. This is your pal. This is Randy, the Hacker Man Savage. We're going to go through Q&A. But before we do that, before we do that, Jake, I want you to talk about this endpoint analysis. We got we got the most offensive conference coming up to ever crack your hashes. It's going to be all over the place. And you're teaching a course there. Tell us about it, Jake. Tell us about it. Yeah, no, definitely. First, I'm going to snap into a Slim Jim and then no. Um, so the, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so we are teaching a, or say we are, I am teaching a, a, a two day uh, forensics course ahead of the most offensive con that ever offensive, offensive, offensively or something along the, I know there's lots of offensives in there. Um, but uh, in the two day uh, course, um, look, I'm not going to pretend for a minute here. You're going to walk out of that and be some forensic deity, right? You're not. Um, it requires a lot of practice. But, and I want to throw this out here, the only way you get good at this stuff is practicing with data sets where somebody can turn and say, this is how the data set was created. Here's what we know to be ground truth. Um, and then also walking you through the analysis, hand, I don't want to say hand holding, but, but also the, you know, basically as we do the lab reviews, right? Um, not just showing you an answer, but also how do we arrive at the answer? Um, so we cover in the two-day course um, both breach forensics and a little bit of insider threat investigation as well, uh, trying to move that, uh, <clears throat> trying to you know uh, pivot between uh, pivot between those two. Uh, I do see a question here about the uh, the SANS 508. I have not touched that material in three plus years, so I, I couldn't. I'm positive that material has been updated. Uh, I'm positive we have stuff on our course newer than three years. I'm sure SANS does as well. I, I just can't speak to that. So apologies there. Excellent, but, brother. So here's the thing. You have got to show up. You got to come off the top rope and get some forensication on. You got to go to Jake's class. You got to go and sign up. It's coming March 1st, 2nd, and 3rd for all your files. You go in. He's going to carve them up. He's going to show you how to take them off the top rope into the turnbuckle and deliver that evidence. Deliver it down. But we do. We do have questions, Jake. So here it comes, right? We got we got Thomas here saying event code for. 907 changes the SACL. I don't know what that means. What does that mean, Jake? Yeah, so so that's uh, a security access control list, and, and indeed you do see that a lot, right? Um, and so this this really is is typically there to uh, most often you're going to see it when they're leading into cross process injection, um, but it is noisy, noisy, noisy because it turns out that those operations are performed a lot benign, um, and so it's one of those event codes that. It's not that you never find anything interesting there. It's that when there's something interesting there, it's buried in mounds of non-interesting stuff and typically has to be correlated with other interesting event IDs that, depending on your configuration, probably already told that story. Yeah. All I know is one time, once, The Undertaker tried to take my keys and I threw him off the cage that was SummerSlam. But this guy over here, he's got BT as a guest. He's saying, grabbing these key files, is there a better way than cape or PowerShell? I wore a cape once in the 80s. You don't wear capes. So what do we do, Jake? Is there a better way than cape or PowerShell? Yeah, I mean, look, uh, I've been an F-Response fan for years. Um, F-Response Enterprise is still one of my go-to tools in consulting. 
Um, the uh, gosh, um, certainly, uh, you know, you can use PowerShell uh, if you're looking for something just for a single machine, like you're you're playing along at home. Access data, excuse me. Now, uh, access data got bought by. I can't remember whatever. Um, but the uh, FTK uh, uh, FTK uh, it's not an analyzer. I'll come up with it in a second. Um, but uh, ultimately, that's a tool that you can use that, that's free to go acquire those files as well, or just volume shadow copy, right? FTK Imager. I don't know why I was having trouble with that. Uh, FTK Imager, uh, again, free tool that you can download and put on a machine that'll go extract any file on the machine. Uh, but volume shadow copy can, can grab those files as well. You can use VSS Admin to create a volume shadow copy right now, go mount that volume shadow copy and copy any of the files that would have been locked open for writing. Nice. Yeah. So another question here from the Discord, Jake. So mm -hmm. back in 1986, I fought a tag team group called the Mastodons, but they want to know what's your what's your handle on Mastodon? How do they reach you on Mastodon? Yikes, that is an excellent question as well. It is. You think I'd know that? It's malware Jake. <laughs> malware Jake um, at infosec.exchange. Nice. Nice. So for your event log over here, we got, that oh, was that Des Destian? We got, for your event log, what's your thought, Sysmon or Event X Command? Event X, EX Command? I don't, I don't know what these things are. I know I was at an event that was uh, uh, the X-Force versus the Hacker Man, but I don't know, what, what is this? Yeah, so, so I think what they're going after here is, do I recommend parsing with EBTX Command, right? EBTX E Command, or do I recommend Sysmon? Um, and... This is not even comparing apples to oranges. This is like comparing apples and elephants, right? These things are 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 sort of related. They are both, you know, living things at one point. But but that's it. That's where they stop being related. Um, you know, Sysmon, as it turns out, is is generating data for me. And as it turns out, what are the odds? Event log format. That's a format that who knew EBTX export um, can or the EBTX E command can actually export as well, right? Um, and so. So this isn't an either or thing. Um, now there, I could teach a whole course on configuring Sysmon, uh, you know, to assist in uh, intrusion forensics and indeed um, in even an insider forensics. But that's that's one that's stuff that has to be done before the incident, right? You can't analyze data that we didn't collect. Um, but but then separately, don't think about Sysmon just holistically. Don't think about Sysmon as a replacement for something uh, necessarily. Think about it as augmenting other collection that you wouldn't have otherwise. Nice, nice. So I, I hear what you're saying. And there's a lot of people that we hope show up to learn from you. That's that's the at the anti-siphon summit, the SmackDown. He's going to lay this stuff out, right? March 1st, 2nd, and 3rd. 2nd and 3rd, Jake's going to be in the trainer. But over here, we got, we got some other questions. We got, okay. So Roy says, can you recommend some books or courses? Now, courses, we know what course they got to go to. They got to take course. your course. But of course. Books. Yikes. How should they books. go read? You know, if you are getting into this now, um, today, all right, let's let's do this here. Let's go get Amazon. So Amazon, and you know, you never live uh, go into an Amazon window in, unless you're an incognito, um, ever, ever. Um, so did that once they saw all the body oil and speedos I buy, forget it. That's it. That's it, man. Once, no. and that's the only time you want to do this, I'll right? So, it. so Harlan Carvey um, has a fantastic uh, forensics book. Uh, let's see, what is the latest for investigating Windows systems, right? Um, this is a little bit long in the, uh, I say a little bit long in the tooth, right? In that, you know, things advance quickly, right? So we're looking at, what, almost five years, right? But this is still a really good, um, you know, really good book for starting to think about, um, <clears throat> starting to think about how to do that analysis, how to do that investigation. Um, and then separately, uh, this other book that he has, the uh, Windows Forensic Analysis Toolkit. I think that's the latest one. Yeah. Um, ba -dum -bum -bum. And I'll drop this link into the chat. Yeah, there we go. And this one's almost, we're looking at what, almost 10 years old now. Um, so, so this one's a little bit, you know, and again, I, I don't mean to imply like it's bad. Just, you know, is what it is. Can I do? Yeah, I can do everyone. Perfect. Um, so that's probably where I'd start, um, you know, because despite the fact that it's old, um, the NTFS hasn't changed. Uh, registry analysis, by and large, hasn't changed. There's more of it to do, right? 
Um, but, but again, learning those concepts is, is more important than specific tools and specific, you know, specific artifacts directly. So that's great. So we are right at the top of the hour. And this is, this has been amazing. Jake, you come through, you came in, your theme music was wild and that's, what's going to happen at the hack down. So you got to come join us on March 1st, 2nd, and 3rd, while my brother here, Jake Williams, is going to come off that top rope. He's going to give you that knowledge. He's going to give you the elbow of file carving and just come in and teach you what you got to do to be a forensicator. Now, Jake, anything else you want to leave all these fine, fine forensicators out here about your talk? Well, yeah, absolutely. It's, it's that if you happen to have shown up here and you are an offensive security practitioner, um, know that there's a lot out there for you to learn about forensics. There's a lot of value to you learning about it so that you know what you're leaving behind. Um, and you know, one of the best value, one of the most best value adds that you can give to an organization you're doing offensive security work for, and the best value adds is you saying, here's how to detect me. Here's the artifacts that I left behind. Right. So if you're trying to red team and delete a bunch of those, rock on, you'll learn what's being left behind. Um, and then separate, so hopefully you can remove it, right? Or at least obfuscate it. Um, and then, you know, the second piece there is uh, if you want to provide better value generally, it's just reporting, hey, here's uh, how to go to technic. So awesome. that is, you're the cream of the crop, Jay. You rise up. I'm, I'm going to send you a whole box of Slim Jims, but I will see you on March 1st, 2nd, and 3rd. Randy, the hacker man, Savage will be there. We'll be talking. It'll be fantastic. So from us at Black Hills, Anti-Siphon, Jake, and everyone here tuning in, thank you for spending an hour with us. It means a lot to the hacker man, and we will see you soon in the next webcast. Ryan, play the outro music. Take us out. 